Safety. Wasn't that feeling impossible? After everything, I figured that some pipe dream long since gone. There was something about this. The way she slowly brushed her hands through my hair. I didn't feel like anything else existed anymore. But I'd seen who I was. Left abandoned at the door. There was only us. At that moment. You think there's really a way out after all this, Eric? I had to tilt my head up from where we laid to fully see her expression. God, she looks so tired. Didn't deserve this. Really, no one did. Yeah, I do, Jess. I didn't have a reason to get up if I'd lost that. I don't think I'm ready to check out after the last time I tried. Plus, I didn't want any of you losers here looking into my guts and I'm gone. That shit's pretty personal. They've been with me my whole life. Ah, uh, yes. Because everyone is just ready and waiting to judge the quality of your inner organs just to spite you. That smile of hers. Even when it just sneaks in for a moment. No, wait. Haven't I had this conversation before? I mean, they are pretty good. Get me going all right so far. Only slightly damaged by nicotine, but still top quality. Huh. I didn't know you smoked. I mean, you also didn't know my name isn't actually Eric. But we all have our secrets. That look of hers. I've definitely done this before. Been here. Wait, why can't I move? This must be a dream. It's the only answer, right? No, why this, of all things? It isn't? Nah. This place felt fucked up from the start. I've never been a fan of my real one. Hell, normally I hate thinking about it so much that I just go by my last name. I can't stop. I can't stop the words from coming out. Fuck, I, I remember where this is going. Don't do it, just stop now. I knew it was a bad idea to get too comfortable. Gave away too much back then. Well, you can't just bring that up and not tell me. It's garbage, trust me. Absolutely hate it. Oh, come on, it can't be that bad. Gasper Mills. The strings of sinew and meat. Pulling at everything, playing that scene like it was a goddamn puppet show. It was spreading, growing. This is over. Whatever was in the walls is dead. Stop this. Wake the hell up. The tissue that was quickly consuming everything tore apart, giving space for the eyes that shot open, no logic to their placement or size, just claiming their space and shining in the dark, impossible to avoid, each blinking before finally locking in on me. It made it all hard to keep track of by the stray bits of gore that devoured what was left of Jess. Swirling around, slowly closing in, was only a matter of time. Now it would be my turn to face the same fate. I've never shot up from sleep so quickly. Drenched in a cold sweat with a heart beating far too fast. Eyes burnt and it felt like my brain was vibrating around inside my skull. It's just a nightmare. Pulled together. I needed to breathe. Give myself some time to wake up, make sure everything worked right. Well, Eric. Gotta say, you look like absolute shit. Sitting across the room from me. Was the last person I wanted to see right now. Ken? Tiny things were off with how he looked, couldn't exactly pin down the extent of it. Obviously his voice was off. His eyes were yellow, unlike the green ones I used to know. There just wasn't anything natural feeling about him anymore. Clearly in Ken's case, nothing ever was. See, I get the feeling we ended off on the wrong foot. You fucking think? Oh come on, Eric, don't be like that. Or should I call you Gaspar? Mills. It's just Mills here. Don't use that goddamn name ever again. Mills. See, I thought I had you all figured out. Now I find out you're using a fake name. We really need to work on those trust skills. 
Yeah, how about we talk about the fact that you're still some sort of mangled meat monster thing under all that skin? Kind of makes the whole fake name thing seem a little unimportant in comparison. Please, you don't even know what I actually look like. Just because you saw Grace like that doesn't mean we all look the same. You're being pretty judgmental, Mills. How dare you? Oh, I'm sorry. How dare I? I should really have the patience to deal with a mass murderer with respect and fucking class. That was just a hand I got dealt, Mills. I was dealing with a figurative vice grip around my dick. There wasn't ever a hope in hell of doing anything but what it wanted. Now, things have changed, Mills. It's a whole new world. Uh Uh-huh. You still aren't welcome here, not after what you did. Please don't get all bent out of shape, Mills. I told you, things are different. I get to be me, make my own choices, go where I want, do what I want. Sure, I couldn't get everything the way I'm used to, but I'm still me. Just my own version. Not one ruled by some jack-off hiding in some walls. So what? You're here to gloat about... about being your own man? I'm here to make sure my only friend is okay. After that stupid shit the freak show did. Well, certainly you're doing fine after it. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. You are all so good at adapting. No matter how bad things got, figured, hey, might as well try doing that too. Just fuck off, Ken. I... There was a knock at the door. Sir, is everything all right in there? An older woman's voice spoke through the door. Our conversation clearly wasn't as quiet as it could have been. Ken was trying to motion for me to get rid of her, but I had a far better idea. No, can you please get this asshole out of here? Menners opened the door and looked around. There was an expression on her face that read as clear as day that she was confused. Sir, would you like me to call the doctor if you- Ken, the asshole sitting in the chair, right there with a shit-eating grin- The confusion quickly turned to surprise when she finally turned her head and noticed Ken was sitting there. For a moment, she looked as if she was going to say something, but instead turned her attention to Ken. Sir, if you refuse to leave and continue to cause distress for our patient, security will be forced to remove you. All right. All right. I'll go. My friend here doesn't seem like he's in a talking mood anyways. Ah, well. Thanks for the introduction anyways, Mills. We'll catch up again real soon. I watched him leave the room. Ed was hurting even worse than before. I guess that was just a side effect of his charming personality. I wasn't in the right state to deal with him right now. The nurse left soon after, when she was absolutely sure he was gone, letting me know that she'd talk to the proper people and make sure that he wasn't allowed back in. She still looked a little uncomfortable when she left. Didn't ask why. Ken sort of killed my desire to talk to anyone right now. I was finally left alone. Spent far too long just staring at the ceiling, just trying to pull my head together. Never felt so fucked up, all because of some stupid nightmare. To be honest, I expected the whole Ken being alive thing to be way worse than some bad dream. Kenneth was a real problem that I wasn't just going to wake up from. Eyes closed. Didn't realize how long I'd been like that till it was dark. It wasn't that I wanted to wake up in that either, just that I could hear the sound of something being dragged closer and closer to my room. Before I knew it, the door opened and a rather sturdy looking chair was thrown in. A man in sunglasses and some ugly Hawaiian shirt strolled in. He was carrying some sort of backpack that he practically threw at me. What? One sec, kid. Man, there was already a chair here. Been too long since I've had to wander into a place like this. Don't even remember how they keep in the rooms anymore. He sighed before pushing the chair he apparently spent so much effort on against the door. Sitting down, and then he just waved. So, hello kid. You're, uh... He snapped his fingers like he was trying to draw some sort of memory using the sound. Mills. You're Mills. See? I got it. Now my name is Brandon Lewis. I'm your babysitter for the evening, expected to be boring. They aren't paying me nearly enough to put on a good show, but I brought gifts to make up for it. Brandon. What exactly are you doing here? Because I gotta say, the whole keeping the door shut thing's a little threatening. He looked around, clearly having never considered that. Look, I'm a friend of Snackdraw's, and me being here is just a boring safety thing. No need to look too deep into it. And here I figured he was waiting for me to call. Well, that was the plan before. Hadn't even figured out the whole fake name thing when we wrote the invitation. Snacky was very impressed with what you pulled off. Snacky? Mm Mm-hmm. Now just open the bag already. It was clear I wasn't going to get anything else out of him until I did what he wanted. The bag was completely unremarkable from the outside. It kept 
playing it over in my head, trying to figure out what kind of fucked up magical nonsense Snackdraw would send him to bring me. And when it turned out to be a set of clothes, some shoes, and my cell phone, I was a little surprised at how normal it all was. Had one of the nerds pick out some clothes for you. Snack and I don't exactly have what you'd call the modern fashion sense. I mean, at least that's what everyone else says. He just accepts it and goes with what they suggest. Me, on the other hand? Nah. Just don't think they understand the importance of making a flashy entrance. The coat alone looked like it would cost a decent chunk of change, but the shoes were where it stopped feeling as normal as I might have originally suspected. Just like a normal pair of black sneakers. They were steel-toed, giving a weight to them, one that you wouldn't expect. I was also slightly concerned that they felt the need to include a pair of black gloves. It might be cold out this time of year. Couldn't shake the feeling it was an addition made to avoid getting fingerprints on things down the line. Overall, a pretty normal looking outfit, but even I could tell this kind of shit wasn't the cheap stuff that I was used to. So, any burning questions? We got a whole night to kill, so might as well break the ice. Do aliens exist? Getting into this right away, huh? Yeah, but not as common as you'd expect, though. Last I heard, Earth is seen as annoyingly primitive, stressful, and the sights don't make up for it, so... We aren't exactly a prime travel destination. We aren't gonna get invaded, are we? Man, on the galactic scale, that would be like invading a beach to take over some kid's sandcastle. Lots of flash for zero reason. Vampires? Yeah, but literally all I hear about them is stories of orgies getting into some next level weird stuff. The blood addiction, changing times, and modern popular culture hasn't exactly helped build any sense of dignity. Godzilla? That's a movie. S series of movies in a various other media products. I've been in hell for what felt like months. Give me this one. Just answer the damn question. No. I mean the movies exist. Okay, so, okay, so you're saying there's no giant city destroying sized monsters at the end of this? You nailed it. Damn. Faced again with the crushing reality that even after all the bullshit, I'm not going to get to see even one giant monster attack in my lifetime. Ugh. Didn't want to move on, but sometimes you need to accept the truth no matter how painful. You, uh, gonna be okay there? Honestly, right now, I just want to go home, watch shit on TV, eat a whole pizza in one sitting. I've been stuck thinking about life and death for so long, I just want a normal night. I remember what things used to feel like. Well, I charged the phone for you so you could at least see what the internet is saying and watch shit there. Nice. I've been the one looking after it for the record. I'll do the boring stuff now and say I made an archive of everything. Social media posts, photos, all that kind of nonsense got collected. Did you a favor and responded to any messages asking if you were alive with I'm fine, can't talk right now. Great, because this isn't an incredible invasion of my privacy. Eh, it's just normal practice, and while it may have been a solid idea given the circumstances, you still used a fake name. Just needed to know you weren't hiding any obvious skeletons in your closet. And, well, to see if there was any hints as to who set the whole thing up. By thing, I assume whatever that place was. Yeah, given only you and Snackdraw made it out, either you're hiding a hell of a lot more than just a fake name, or someone else set it up, knowing we'd show up to deal with it. What? How can I put this in a way that'll make sense for you? Uh, say you wanted to hunt a deer or something like that. Most situations, a rifle is going to get the job done. This is like someone using a missile launcher. If the goal was to just hunt a deer, using enough firepower to shut down a tank doesn't exactly make sense now, does it? It takes real work to mess with people's memory like that. If you just expected some normal people, why bother? It isn't worth the resources. Just tell me, is there someone out there who set that whole thing up? Somebody who wasn't on the inside? It's looking like it. Part of the deal is you get out. One of the gifts you get for setting up a ritual like that. Everything else dying doesn't fit. Unless you've got some things to confess to that even we couldn't dig up. You sure Ken didn't do it. He was here. He clearly made it out. Ken got out? Kenneth, the third chain. The thing Snek killed right at the end. Yeah, he, he was here. Said some crazy shit about being his own thing before a nurse walked in and I had her kick him out. No, I can't say I knew about that. Uh, excuse me for just a second. You should get dressed while I make a call. He smiled as he took out a phone from his pocket and stood up. Seemed to be completely calm as he pulled the chair from the entryway. 
It was once the door was open that he started cracking, grabbing the seat he brought and throwing it out of the room, and to keep smiling the whole time he did it. I have to give him credit for that, I really only got to see the rage spread to his face as he was slamming the door shut. Nothing about that seemed good. Took his advice, got dressed. The shoes would take some getting used to, but at least everything fit right, although probably meant someone went through my actual stuff and figured out what size I was. Thinking about the deeper ramifications of that just made my head hurt more than it already was. Yet another problem I could deal with later, after I can take something to at least numb how loudly my brain was screaming at me. If I was smart, I would have asked the nurse for something to help the problem before she left. Okay, so the plan has changed. Snack draws dealing with a little party downstairs and wants us to sneak out of here before anything else shows up. Said the stairwell should be clear. What the fuck's going on? Look, situation might have switched up a little. I don't like it either. Honestly, there's a long list of people way more suited to this kind of thing. Meaning? Well, I'm contractually obligated to remain a pacifist, so that isn't exactly the best thing right now. But we'll deal with it. What? Look, look, look. It isn't the time for this right now. We just need to get out before anyone realizes we're here. After he practically dragged me out of the room, part of me expected everything to be on fire, but instead it was just quiet. Wasn't anyone left wandering the halls, leaving the whole place feeling well, uncomfortably empty, but aside from the now trashed chair? I suppose that was enough for a, that was a signal that something was off. Why is it so dead out here? We have the whole area locked down. If anyone's out and about, it's likely bad news. Out of nowhere, Brandon just stopped, his head tilting upward as he started sniffing around like he was, like he was some kind of dog or something. He got uncomfortably close and started pushing me towards the middle of the hallway. Finally, he got around to whisper to some sort of explanation. I'm going to line you up. When I tell you to punch, do it as hard as you possibly can. Doesn't matter if you don't get it, just need to trust me here. Don't say anything, just get in a good stance and we'll nail this. What was he even talking about? The entire hallway was empty, can't even hear anything out of the ordinary. Just as I thought, the lights down the hallway started flickering. Get ready. There still wasn't anything there. What was I even going to hit? What kind of bullshit do these people deal with day to day? Couldn't even- Now! Buried all my thoughts and put everything I had into one hit. Still, wasn't anything there. God damn it, this was far too much fucking setup for a shitty joke. Just as my eyes closed to blink, I made contact. There it goes, what a hit. A moving mass of something was wrapped around my fist. Almost worm-like, but the pointy shell they had didn't line up with anything I'd ever seen before. Almost looked like, like they had little arms tipped in pointed nubs. They were using them to, in combination with the rest of their bodies, winding and knotting together, forming what they could only be loosely described as a squirming knuckle duster. The exoskeletons weaved perfectly to get the most damage out of the sharp edges that decorated them. Not to take away this fantastic work you're doing, I mean, I'm not saying anything, but that scavenger you hit could really use a nice old curb stomp or two. Hadn't even moved from the first goddamn problem, and there was already another sprawled out on the floor. Was it a lizard? It almost had the back legs of a frog, also had far too many eyes, its arms, and even hands tipped with sharp nails. It looked like, it looked like it might have been about a, a waist high, although that, that might not have been completely accurate given the state that I was in. Mills. Focus, it's gonna get up if you keep standing around. Oh, got it! Alright, Jesus! The choice in shoes started to make far more sense as I kicked the shit out of that thing. After the first few hits, the worm had moved down and settled on my foot. Eventually, my brain caught up with the adrenaline-fueled madness of it all, but bits of meat didn't exactly leak out answers or deeper meaning, just... leaves you feeling empty. You did it! Fantastic job, I knew you had it in you, kid. God, they grow up so fast. Pat me on the back. Realized the insects were crawling on him. First one is always the worst. You're dizzy, head probably kills, and it's gonna feel a little weird for a bit, but you'll grow out of it. What are you? A friend you'll need if you want to get out of this one. Won't find any better moral support in the business. Worms? Are your pets are some kind of STD from screwing around with this kind of shit? Come on, they aren't worms. Do you really want the answer to that right now? Yes! He got close and pulled his jaw open. Hiding just behind a pair of human teeth was a mess of countless writhing shapes, just like the other insects I had recently been introduced to. He let go and readjusted his mouth a little. Took far too much willpower to not throw up in front of him after seeing inside. It's just charming old me. Should have given a little warning, but why ruin the fun? So what about that whole pacifist thing? I didn't attack anything. I just moved some things here and there. And it just happened other things got in the way. 
Now let's see what we're dealing with before we move on. Brandon, I've been talking to a bunch of worms the whole time. I guess you have to fight fire with fire, but that didn't exactly explain why he was so weird, I guess. With Snek, it seemed like he has his grim seriousness. He carries wherever he goes, and pretty much what you'd expect. Brandon, on the other hand, he's a pile of bugs in a human suit. They can hold a conversation far better than Snack Driver could. Eek. I'd gotten caught in my thoughts and hadn't noticed Brandon moving over that thing's corpse. He was picking away at the remains, occasionally shoving a chunk into his mouth. What the fuck are you doing now? Can only get so much from smell alone. There's about four more scattered around the hospital. Only two could be a problem. You should at least be able to see them now. Just needed the right push to let your mind figure out what they looked like. For every answer he gave me, five more questions stacked up. My brain was running on fumes. Didn't even have time to get fucked up over killing something again. I was already quickly moving on from the fact that I had been talking to worms. I just kept moving forward. Nothing makes goddamn sense. Skull is close to bursting and my heart is beating out of my goddamn chest. Mills. Lost focus. Saw nothing but shadows. It was stretched far too thin. Something must have finally snapped. Everything felt like it was burning. Keep moving forward. Maybe then everything else will start working again. Just plow through whatever this is. Can't afford to let myself get stupid. Can't let a little freak out like this win. Eyes finally cleared. It greeted me with the last thing I ever wanted to see. The hallway of cracking walls and exposed tissue turned away, praying for anything but this. On well, the new site, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. All the pretense of walls ever being there were gone. What was left in its place was what I could describe as a chapel constructed of bone and organs. The eyes were the only thing that broke through the red that stained every inch, infesting floor and a wall all blinking and pointing right at me, and in the moment of it all was something dark and squirming. The longer I looked at it, the worse my head hurt. It felt growing concerned that my brain might melt and crawl out of my ears if I stayed here any longer. It's fine, none of this is real. Turn around. You're just seeing things. Just keep going. Ignore the growing weight of every step. Sickness inside. This place is gone. Just having some kind of fever dream. Keep moving down that hall. Because anything is better than being here. In the end, it wasn't my head or legs that eventually gave out, but the floor. But more like it ripped itself open. And all I was left with was a descent into nothingness. I just kept falling. The distance. There wasn't any possible way I could fall this long without hitting anything. God... Damn it, what the fuck can I do when it steals the floor from me? I can't just give up. I can feel it watching again, and I'm not giving it the satisfaction of seeing me break. Just need to come up with a plan. Cheery's song cut through any tension in the air. Stupid default ringer on my cell phone. How the hell was I getting signal? I managed to maneuver enough to answer the thing without losing it. It was only static, but three loud clicks and one word finally broke through. Integrity. Before I knew it, the screen had shut off. Something started glowing, bright enough to be seen under the panel. Just like that, without warning, it blew up in a piercing blue light, and before I was even able to grasp what had happened, I was sent flying into something hard. Head was messed up beyond words, ears were still ringing, peeling off what remained of the glove, showing my right hand was in a rough state, to put it lightly. I might be able to move it. But with the pain, this wasn't worth it. Eyes at least still worked perfectly, although the blood and overall shitty feeling made the right one harder to keep open. Got myself past the shock, at least enough to notice that I had somehow ended up in an alleyway. With a little adjusting, I was able to see that I was across from the hospital. I really just wanted to sleep then and there, call it quits for the day, move on, hope all this was just a bad dream. Nothing about that seemed like a good idea. At least the pain inside my skull was calmed down, so it's only dealing with the external problems. I needed to focus. They did more than just mine my phone for information. Did they expect something like this might happen? Was that supposed to kill me? Could it mean with enough pain maybe I could knock myself out for whatever that was? No, it didn't seem like it was a normal explosion. Not that I'm an expert. Just it shouldn't have been blue like that. 
It was a normal bomb, right? Maybe it was like whatever Snack Draw did with the skulls to break that nightmare apart. It is blood or some black magic bullshit like that. Fuck. It's like I'm trying to put a puzzle together where half the pieces are on fire. You're looking a little rough there. Lady dressed in white. In a suit that looked far too expensive to be seen in any sort of alley. Can't say I noticed anyone around. For now, it wasn't exactly easy to keep one of my eyes open with the blood leaking out around it. Doing great. Just peachy. <sighs> Shame how empty the streets are tonight. It's a beautiful night. Look, I'm not exactly in the mood to talk, weather lady. You should just get out of here, okay? It's too dangerous to be around right now. That seems like quite the understatement, given your current state. Yeah. Did you want something? Or are you just another one of the freaks joining the party? Oh no, I won't be partaking in the night's activities. The guest list seems far too crowded at the moment anyways. I just wanted to meet you, here and now. Well, you met me, so if you kindly leave, that would be great. Ah, oh, Mills, so lively. D do I know you? Because I don't remember telling anyone like you who I was. Just consider me an ally. You don't get very far in this business without news of it hitting my desk. So you a snack draw then? Some kind of other monster? Neither. Both. I'm more interested in evolution, Mr. Mills. Who achieves it, and who doesn't. Their alliances, or whatever you'd call it. Well, that doesn't matter to me. Okay. And then had what to do with me? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Ah, oh, but look at the time. I suggest you stand. You'll want to be ready for guests. Excuse me? Something about her wasn't right. So when she finally started to walk away, to say it was a relief was an understatement. Oh, and if you could, tell Snackdraw he really should sleep more. The man is going to burn himself out if he keeps this up. Now, goodbye, Mr. Mills. I hope next time we meet, you'll be in a far better state. That chick gives me the chills. Can't pin down why, something about her eyes or the, the way she spoke just put me on edge. Words leaked that vague bullshit that just seemed so popular with these assholes. At the same time, I had a guy throwing answers to everything at me, and it wasn't much better. I know Brandon wasn't just messing with me. After everything else tonight, someone could tell me the sky was green. I wouldn't be 100% sure they were wrong. She was right about needing to get up, at least. I was asking too much out of my tired bones, but I found a way to pull it off. Largely thanks to the wall doing most of the heavy lifting. Managed to stand for a whole five seconds before a wave of nausea washed over me, demanding the content of my stomach right that second. Now that would have been fine, it happens. The part I didn't really enjoy was the black mess that mixed terribly with blood somewhere during the trip. That pain. Same feeling I got after I tried offing myself in the nightmare. Thankfully, it wasn't a repeat trip down memory lane, and it subsided once it was out of my system. I didn't have the luxury of panicking over the deeper implications of this whole experience, before the sound of shattering glass made it apparent that there was far more pressing issues. I had to practically throw myself against the opposite wall to at least make sure I wasn't instantly noticed. Oh, Snectra. What's that I smell? I wonder... Likely your own inept sanitation skills, Creel. How many times did I throw these bitches at you before you get it through that tin skull of yours? Just stay down. I'd be noticed if I ever attempted to look at whatever was actually going on. Sound gave everything away to confidently say there was some sort of fight going on. I was also willing to guess these bitches were probably more of those lizard things. Given Brandon said there was more around. Okay. Let's take in exactly what I'm dealing with. Currently near an exit that leads to the street the hospital is on. Could try and head the opposite way and hope that 
Well, the fighting covered any sound that I'd make, and after that I could get away and try to figure out what actually was happening to me. Avoiding his comments about smell, though. Blood might just be what fucks this up. Open wounds, leave evidence, smell, risk infection, the dumber my ideas get. Landing back in a hospital seems like its own death sentence after tonight. Just be waiting to get picked off. That's also taking what could be bullshit taunting at face value. Still, I know I haven't heard any gunfire. He was stupid enough to talk shit mid-fight. Maybe the dumbest answer is the right one. At least try and handle that in my terms. After I stepped out, I had a few moments to process the scene before things really got out of hand. Creel turned out to be some skinny-looking asshole. Didn't feel the need to wear a shirt under his jacket, so he was showing off some shitty-looking skull tattoo, leading far too heavy into his grimdark bullshit that he had going on. It was right when I guessed that he was the owner of those lizard things, as all four Brandon had mentioned were circling Snackdraw. Made a little more sense why he was having problems. Every time he'd grab one, or almost land a hit, it would dissolve to dust, crawling out of the floor next to whoever that Creel guy was. Took a deep breath before I potentially ended up dead. Can't help thinking I'm missing all the fun. Creel turns his attention towards me. Man, it looks like you've already had a hell of a night. You know, everyone seems to be saying that. Get the feeling that you're here for me. He knows. Knows and was still stupid enough to walk right into it. All well gimp as fuck, mind you. You're either hiding something or a hell of an idiot. Lean more towards the idiot part. <laughs> I like this one, Snack Draw. Not some uptight asshole like the other dogs you drag around. Hey, uh, you're the guy who killed one of those things on the third floor. He pointed in the direction of Snackdraw, who'd already put together that I was buying him time, and was finally getting an edge on his monster problem now that Keel wasn't intentionally calling them back. Yeah, uh, you, you know how it goes. Things happen. Skulls get stomped in. Such is life. Nah, man, I get you. Damn thing should have moved out of my range. Got what it deserved. It looks like it landed some hits before it were out, at least. Oh, this? Nah... That thing didn't do this. Thought you'd believe it, but I had some phone trouble, actually. Meaning what exactly? You, you stabbed a battery and it blew up in your face? You know, probably something like that. Behind him, Snackdraw was taking full advantage of the arrogance. I could see one of those things trapped in the air, flailing helplessly before its head violently snapped back. Disgusting, but left more questions. Feels like he could have handled this already, but was holding back. There were street signs, trash cans, a long list of other crap that he could have used to beat the shit out of these things. Wait, was he actually trying to avoid causing damage to the property? Looks like he was taking more hits than he needed to, just to make it happen. This guy's something else. Shift in focus meant I didn't even have time to react when Creel rushed at me suddenly. By the time I fully comprehended how fast he was moving, he punched me in the face. And at that point, a strong breeze was enough to knock me over. So the fact that I ended up on the ground surprised no one. You're a stupid son of a bitch, you know that? Do you have any idea what kind of bullshit we'd have to deal with if you died? Creel had been too focused on me. And that rage wasn't exactly the kind that you'd expect out of someone looking to kill you. Wait, stop. What the hell do you mean by that? Once Snack had killed one of those things, this was over. Had the corpse flying around and was using it to beat the hell out of the others. It didn't take long for all of them to stop moving. Creel clued into what was happening far too late. His head had met pavement by the time that he even had a chance to react. Didn't see why, but it seemed safe to assume that Snack Draw was finally able to deal with him now that he was alone. Creel was still breathing, but there was no sign of any other movement. <sighs> Jesus Christ, he couldn't have waited a few more seconds. For what? A chance to hear him spew more rambling nonsense. In due time, we will find out all he knows, and in a far more accommodating setting. He offered his hand and helped me to my feet. It's an drop. Something is very fucking wrong with me. I know. Something almost dire about how he said that. Even in this state, it irritated the hell out of him wasn't even willing to give me the time of day and just went on making sure Creel was actually knocked out. There wasn't any shaking this off as it's just being distracted. Something about that made him furious beyond words. Just as I was about to ask what the fuck is happening right now, I felt something dig into my neck. Sorry about this kid, but we can't deal with this here. Brandon 
What? Things just got darker and darker. Seriously? Did that horde of maggots actually just struck me? I would have just gone with them. Not like there was even any other option. After everything today, I didn't think that I could get any more confused. What the hell did I do to piss Snack Draw off? And why is everything splitting apart at the seams? Can't help but think that probably. Probably should have gambled on getting out of here while I still could. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you all thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, or watching tonight's story if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, that means you're probably on the podcast that's available on iTunes, on the Google Play Store, and is now actually available on Spotify, and doesn't use as much data. So, hey, that's a thing. If you guys aren't listening on YouTube or Spotify, then I have no idea how else you could have found me. Unless you found one of those books on Amazon. You know, the Creepypasta Collection, Volume 1, Volume 2. Those are things, too. Oh, well. I don't know how you would have heard me there, seeing as this was recorded, like, two years after those came out. Uh. Well, anyway. Thanks for listening, folks. And sweet dreams. <laughs>